In any level circuit performed to establish new vertical control points, commonly called benchmarks, there will be some closure error at the end of the circuit. When our closure error is within an acceptable limit, then we can distribute that error within the circuit to minimize its impact on future surveys. We call this process a level circuit adjustment. These field notes are three wire level circuit field notes and we can see the closure error at the tail end of these notes. The surveyor here has identified the circuit error as 0.027 feet. In fact this should be noted as a negative 0.027 feet. If you look carefully at the computed elevation at the ending benchmark in this case that is benchmark 9901, the calculated elevation is 776.783. In parentheses to the right of that is the previously published elevation of that benchmark 776.81. So therefore the calculated elevation has come in below the published elevation and thus the circuit closure error is a negative 0.027 feet. We are going to apply an adjustment that is proportional to the distance covered by this level circuit. Here on the end page of these notes you can also see the total distance covered by this circuit. How do we know this? Well it's collected from the three wire measurements. The stadia constant of 100 is applied to the difference between the upper and lower hair reading for each backside or foresight. Thus in the case you see here the difference in this foresight reading 4.89 on the top hair less 4.28 on the bottom hair the difference is 0.61 and thus when we multiply 0.61 times 100 we get a distance of 61 feet. That is the distance from the instrument to the rod for that reading. This is not the only level circuit adjustment method, but it is acceptable for simple loop or link circuits. Other methods include a least squares adjustment, which is very appropriate if you're using a network of measurements. Now that we know the length and the closure error, let's consider where we'll be making our adjustments. We said our ending benchmark was 9901. Well here you can see that the beginning benchmark is 9901. Thus this is a closed loop circuit. It starts and ends in the same location. You can see turning points listed here, turning point 1 and 2 down the left column, and then we see a benchmark 9902. How do I know it's a benchmark? Well, if you look on the right side of the notes here, you'll see a description for that benchmark. So 9902 is our next benchmark. We will adjust the elevation that we've measured for 9902. Then we continue on the next page from 9902 down through turning points 3, 4, and 5 onto the next page, and our next benchmark is 0308. Also, its description shows on the first page of these notes. Then we continued our circuit from 0308 down through turning points 6, 7, and 8, and then closed our benchmark circuit on point 9901. So we need to find the distances from the beginning of the circuit to points 9902 and 0308. So as we consider how to do this, Notice that on this page we can see all the back sites and all the four sites needed to compute the distance from 9901 to 9902. There are three back sites and three four sites that will get us from 9901 to 9902. So we need to sum those three back sites and the corresponding three four sites in order to get the distance. Similarly, we need to calculate the distance from the beginning of the circuit, in our case 9901, to the second benchmark, 0308. So based on our measurements, we know that the length of our circuit is 
4827. So from 9901 back to 9901, our total length is 4827 feet. We also need to consider the distance from the beginning of the circuit to point 9902 and then also to 0308. 3,282 feet from 9901 to 0308. And then the distance from the beginning of the circuit to 9902 was 1,321 feet, and that is to 9902. So as we said before, we will apply an adjustment proportional to the distance. The correction that we apply to each calculated elevation is opposite in sign to the fraction of distance divided by total length times the closure error in the circuit. Okay, well we know that our error here was a negative 0 0.027 feet. So for D1 we can plug in and get C1. So C1 will be 1321 feet over 4827. 4827 is the total length. This is going to be negative and this is times a negative 0 0.027. So this gives us a positive 0 0.007. That is the correction at point 9902. Let's also calculate it for 0308 using distance to. So the correction to will be the negative of 3282 feet divided by 4827 feet times our negative 0 0.027 feet and this gives us a result of 0 0.020 feet. So now to apply our corrections, we're going to simply summarize these. These are the calculated elevations based on our measurements for points 9902, 0308, and our closing benchmark 9901. Now remember, we started at 9901, and its published elevation was this, 776.81. Our calculated elevation at the end, based on our measurements, is 776.783. Our closure error, as we said before, was negative 0.027. Well, the correction is going to be a positive 0.027. So when we apply the calculated elevation plus the correction, the published elevation is now our adjusted elevation at the end of the circuit. So now let's apply the other corrections. So for C1, we had plus 0 0.007 feet. And for C2, which was the correction at 0308, we had 0 0.020 feet. Thus, our adjusted elevation at 9902 will be 769.834. The adjusted elevation at 0308 will be 776.497. Now, it is not appropriate for us to list these as expressed in thousandths of a foot, that is, three places to the right. So instead, we will round these appropriately. And thus, this rounds to 769.83, and this rounds to 776.50. And there you have it. That is how we adjust a control level circuit proportionally based on distance.